Hey guys, I want to show you something. Check this out. Because we had Robert Kennedy Jr. on and we had a company call or a couple companies call after that and say, yeah, just stuff about him. We're not advertising on this episode. My advertiser was like, you guys need to take the episode down, you know? And, uh, and, and we ended up. And what's wrong with him? Nothing. Nothing. Guy's fucking brilliant. And I've known Guy's him. Guy's a smart fucking I've guy. I've known him for seven years. Great guy. Right. I mean, a neat man. Right. Let me tell you this. Let me fucking tell you this. This is America. You can fucking have whoever you want on your podcast. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Imagine a sponsor that's sponsoring you, calling you and telling you that you can't have this guy. What sponsor did it? Oh, Peloton was the... We just got an update. Um, it was Peloton, Peloton was the band was the per people who wanted an ad out. What do they sell? Fucking bikes, the stationary bikes. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Peloton sells stationary bikes, and they got a problem with Robert fucking Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. You Peloton. <laughs> what? Who the fuck are they? Yeah, first right. Of all, are yeah. you kidding me? Uh, fuck you Peloton. Yeah. I do, wanna... we, do we have Pelotons in the gym? Are those Peloton? Asports, no, no, there's bikes next to it. Asports, As, yeah, we're getting rid of them. Yep. We're getting rid of the Pelotons. Pelotons are out of the gym. Whoever uses the most can fucking have them at home, but they yeah. can't use them here, brother. That's what you do. That, yeah. That's what you do. You stop fucking using their products and you fuck them. I am extremely passionate about the situation in this clip. As a content creator that utilizes honesty as the backbone of his reviews, I strongly disagree with any advertisers telling any content creators what they can or can't do. This also is a form of dishonesty from the content creators that agree to these terms. With that being said, if you want a stationary bike, fuck Peloton, get a yes soul. One week ago today, I was 450 pounds. Start writing a yes soul and look at me now. If you are trying to lose weight, get fit, or just shred a few pounds off the midsection, get yourself a yes soul. In all seriousness, being prepared is something most of us strive for in this community. The number one way you can be prepared is to have your body ready. Think about the stamina and overall jumping health you would gain from riding a bike daily. One that you can answer emails on or possibly watch your favorite show. Now you have no excuse to not fit in that daily workout. Say yes to your soul and get a yes soul. So you probably know that freehand knife sharpening is when you hold a knife in your hand and you sharpen on an abrasive, usually a sharpening stone. Fixed angle knife sharpening is when a system is holding the blade in place, also holding the stone, and you just have to do the motions. Of course, there are hybrids between the two, but as far as freehand versus fixed angle knife sharpening, what are the major differences? What are the positives and negatives of each one? And which one is superior? Let's get into it. First, let's start off with the negatives of each system. So as far as freehand negatives, first negative is you do have to learn to hold and maintain an angle, which can be the most difficult part for a lot of people, being able to hold the same angle over and over and over. And you know that can be very difficult for a lot of people. Also finding the exact angle and then matching it on the other side, all those things can be difficult for a lot of people. Next negative is muscle memory takes time. It takes time to get the muscle memory to be able to hold those angles and to kind of know what angle is good for what and you know what, what winds up working on what geometry and so on. Another negative is you might mess up more in the beginning because, you know, because of those struggles, you're probably going to uh, not damage or ruin, but you're probably not going to have the best edges at first. Next negative is striving for perfection can take a long time and can be very frustrating. How long does it take to learn freehand knife sharpening? Well, I say if you really work at it, like if you really focus in on the details and you don't get... Uh, buried in the stones and things like that. Just get yourself two stones, make sure they're diamond plates because the problem with a lot of people when they learn fr freehand knife sharpening is they get stones that take, they're very high maintenance. They take a lot of effort to use and they're just messy. So if you just use diamond plates, you don't have to worry about any of that and you can just worry about sharpening. So if you just get yourself two diamond plates, a 300 and a 600 and you focus on it and try to sharpen every single day for like an hour or two every day, within a week, you're gonna have decent edges. 
Within a month, you're gonna have a lot better edges. Within six months, you're gonna be pretty damn good. And I would say after a year, you're gonna have most of it pretty much figured out and you're gonna be on your way to, to doing some very, very high quality edges. And I know that sounds like a long time. Obviously, it depends on how much effort you put into it. But like I said, after a week, you're probably gonna be getting pretty decent edges. So from there forward, you're just gonna be perfecting it and perfecting it and then learning these little details that, that benefit you because it does take a little while to learn, you know, the little signs and little things that, you know, that you need to change or, you know, whatever. The next negative is perfectly flat V-ground edge bevels take time to perfect. It is very difficult, or not difficult, it takes time, so it's just time. Like I said, after about a year, I think if you really, really focus in on it, you can get good at doing perfect V-ground edges, but most people sharpen convex edges freehand because it's difficult to hold to be a human being and hold a perfect angle over and over and over to perfection, right? So most people do convex edges. However, it is very possible for humans to do V-ground edges, but it does take time. So one other negative is that when you are doing pretty well and your bevels look really nice, when you take them to a mirror polish, that's when you can kind of see the imperfections. A lot comes out when you put a mirror polish edge. Luckily, you don't need to do a mirror polish edge. You could just stick with a medium grit. However, when you compare a, a, a mirror polished edge from freehand to a fixed angle knife sharpening system, you can really see the differences because one holds an angle perfect. So you know it's a perfectly flat bevel and the way the light hits it really tells you whether or not it's flat or convex. And a lot of times a, a V-ground edge where you think you have a V-ground edge, when you bring it to a mirror polish, you realize it is not a V-ground edge, it is a convex edge. Not that that's a bad thing, and in a lot of ways, and we're gonna talk about this, that a convex edge just might be superior to a V-ground edge, so we'll talk about that. And the last negative for freehand knife sharpening is it can be messy. Now, this will determine um, what stones you're using, but some stones can be very messy, and the, when you're using water with the stones and you're also holding the knife and the stone is wet, your hands can take a beating. Your hands can get very soggy and wet and, you know, it just, it, it's an uncomfortable feeling over time. That can happen. Now, that still happens with fixed angle knife sharpening, let me be clear. So, you, it's not like one doesn't have that happen. It's just one can be a little bit worse over the other because you know you have to hold the knife you know your hands have to drag over the stone and things like that so one can be just a little bit more messy however like i was saying before depending on the stones that won't happen at all so so let's move over to the negatives for the fixed angle knife sharpener so the first one is they're expensive they are very expensive especially if you want to get a good quality one the way I like to look at it is the, the less frustrations you want to deal with, the more money you are going to pour out. And that's just the way it is. So if you want to save some money and you want to go budget as budget as you can, well, then you're going to have far, far more frustrations than somebody who's going to pay the money. That's basically what you're paying money for, is for less frustrations, for your clamp to work better, for you, have, for you to have an easier way to change angles for it to be, you know, just more solid and less movement, less chances of your blade slipping and sliding out, um, all these things, less chances of your stones falling out, you know, just so many different things. Even as little as like, you know, stone uh, changement, like when you're going to change your stones over to, you know, another stone, the frustrations with that. Every single detail gets easier if you shell out the money. So, they get very expensive. The next thing is you always need attachments. Most systems, especially the better ones, are going to have attachments that you will most likely eventually need to get. No system is able to do pretty, there's systems that can pretty much do everything, but most of them can't. Most of them are very limited. And that is the one of the, another negative for uh, fixed angle knife sharpening is they are limited to their ability. So, with attachments, you can make it better. So like if you have um, the clamp the clamp on your system that holds little blades, well, it's most likely not gonna do good with big blades. So you're most likely gonna have to have grab an attachment that holds bigger blades. So 
there's just a lot of accessories and things that you'll that will add up over time which will equal even more expense another negative is clamping certain blade shapes can be very frustrating certain blade shapes especially if you're trying to do low angle edges it might be difficult for you to hit your edge bevel without hitting your clamp your clamp might get in the way so some blade shapes just are not very friendly for clamps the next negative is you can't take it with you unlike freehand that you can take anywhere with you at any time because it's just a skill with fixed angle knife sharpening, you can't. You can't just slap it in your pocket and take it with you. Of course, you can get a carrying case and carry it with you, but are you really gonna take that camping or on a hiking trip or on a fishing trip or over to your grandma's house? Like all these things that where like a freehand knife sharpener could just literally just start sharpening. Of course, they'll need stones, but it's pretty easy to just carry around some stones. Like they don't take up any space. You can find lightweight ones, so. And especially if you're just going to hone or maintain your edge, it's very easy to do um, when you're freehanding, but not with a fixed angle knife sharpening system. Another negative, I kind of already said it, but your system is limited to its ability. So it's not going to have the ability to do things that it can't do. So it's very limited to what it can or can't do. So that can be a negative if you spend money and then you find out, well, this system only does these blades or this blade shape, or it doesn't do this blade shape very well, or maybe it doesn't do, it does fixed blades great, but it doesn't do pocket knives. And there's a lot of systems like that that are a little bit more biased towards certain blades. The next negative is stone limit limitation each system is going to be limited to specific stones now this is why i usually recommend that if you're going to get a fixed angle knife sharpening system get one that allows you to be versatile in your stone ability meaning you're able to use whatever size stone you want whatever shape stone or whatever just basically any stone inside the clamping system they're still going to have some limitations but if you don't do that, in most cases, most systems are limited to a specific size stone, whether it's a four inch stone, a six inch stone. My wife seems to think we're talking about penises. It sounds like you're talking about penis. <sighs> and this time you said, and this time you said that it's limited based off the clamp size. I said what? Limited based off the clamp size, like a I wasn't expecting that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's so funny here. You're funny sometimes. You can add anything to make it worse. So some systems are going to only have the ability to hold the stones that they supply. Meaning if you do want to use some other sort of stone that, you know, that might be a really good stone, you can't. You're going to have to find it through them if they make that type of stone. And then deal with the quality of the one that they make. Now, even if you have um, uh, clamps that will be able to do versatile stones as far as different companies' stones, it might be limited to a specific size. You know, like I was saying before, a four inch stone or six inch stones. Now, having an adjustable clamp that allows you to fit, you know, different lengths stones in the system it is definitely a good thing. But again, those things cost more money. The next negative is eventually you're going to have to upgrade or repair. No matter what, no system. Now, of course, you can you can maintain it and keep it going a lot longer, but eventually everything wears out. The screws that you have to constantly screw in and out are going to strip. Things like that are going to wear out. Uh, that's why it's good to go with a good quality system because then they're usually pretty easy to get the parts for and things like that. The next negative is the heel and the tip of the blade when sharpening can sometimes be very frustrating to hit. And why is that? Well, with a fixed angle knife sharpening system, the, the stone is held at a perfect angle, right? A perfect angle. So when you have a blade that's been sharpened on a belt by hand or by robot, doesn't matter, there's some cases where there's gonna be deeper gouges into the grind than other areas kind of making pockets in a way well it's impossible for the stone to hit those areas without removing all the steel underneath it 
So it can be frustrating sometimes to hit the apex in or even the back of the edge bevel in certain areas, usually the tip and the heel. Now, another thing is if there's a misgrind, like say if it's thinner and thicker in specific areas of one side of the knife and not on the other side, you're not going to be able to do anything about that. You're going to have to just deal with it. Now, with freehand, you can kind of adjust your angle. You can flex your wrist. You can do little things that can help that. Um, and then even like with the tip and the heel area, because you can adjust angles, you can kind of change it and make sure you get those areas a little bit easier than a fixing a knife sharpener allows. If the, the grind does change from, you know, place to place, then the, the thicker, the grind is there, the bigger the bevel will be, and the smaller the grind is in places, the smaller the edge bevel will be. So in some cases, you might get a bevel that looks like a wave or has areas that just all of a sudden dip down, and there's not much you can do about it because, like I said, the fixed angle knife sharpener holds it at a perfect angle, so it's not going to be able to adjust for things like that. So if you switch from one stone to another stone and there is a difference in thicknesses, even if it's by just a little bit, your angle is going to be different. So you're going to have to adjust for that. So you're going to have to know the exact angle your, your, your stone is at and then adjust to, to match it after you switch stones. Because otherwise your angle will be off when you switch to a different stone. Like if you go from a diamond plate that's super thin to a double-sided resin bonded diamond stone that's thicker, well, now that angle changes. So now you need to adjust for that. And that can be frustrating sometimes when you know, you're know you switching back and forth with stones, having to, to, to check the measurement again and then match it up and, and all those things. So with freehand, you, it doesn't matter. You know, changing the stone thickness is doesn't, doesn't change anything for you. And then last, the feeling of control can backfire. Because the system is holding the thing in place and you're just doing the motions, in a lot of cases you feel safe and you'll start rushing or something like that and then something will happen. The stone will, will pop out the rod will come out, um, something will have a failure, and it's not that it's not fixable and that you can't just screw it back in or whatever, but it can lead to you getting cut. It can lead to a lot of things. You know, a lot of bad things can happen, it, you know, because you feel like you're in so much control when, you know, yeah, you are, but that's limited. And what happens is, is you wind up getting away from yourself. Sometimes you'll get tired. Sometimes you will get frustrated and sometimes you will rush. And when those things happen, something can happen and it can backfire on you and it can cause harm, damages, or injuries. Enough with the negatives, what are the positives? So, what are the positives to freehand knife sharpening? Well, first of all, you can take it anywhere. You don't have to worry about, you know, not having it with you because it's knowledge, it's a skill set. And that is a huge, huge thing. You don't ever have to worry about not having the ability to sharpen, you just have to worry about whether or not you have your stones or some sort of abrasive. Because in reality, you can, once you know how to sharpen, you can sharpen on pretty much anything you know not saying it'll be the best quality edge but you can absolutely do it and just having some sandpaper you can absolutely do a great job on that so you know having the ability to do freehand allows you to pretty much take it anywhere and use it anywhere another thing is like i was just saying you can use any stones you can use any sort of abrasive so you're not limited to what a, like with a fr fixed angle knife sharpening system you're limited to what they can hold with freehand, you're not limited at all. You can use a damn coffee cup if you want to. Of course, there's better ways. Of course, there's gonna be superior stones, but all in all, you're not limited to, to any specific stone. You can use any stone you want or any type of abrasive. The next positive is the reward is much greater with freehand. Because it's a skill set, and it's something you can pass down to, to your nieces, your nephews, your children, whatever, or just to the next generation. There's something great about that. There's a great feeling of achievement when you learn how to do it because it does take effort and it does take, you know, um, some frustrations and, you know, there is a hill to get over. So after, you know, you've gotten the hang of it and you're just getting better and better, it is very fulfilling. And in a lot of cases, I think it's very therapeutic. I'm not saying fixing a knife sharpening is not therapeutic because it absolutely can be or is, but freehand knife sharpening, I do think just has a little bit of a higher level of, of that. 
You never have to worry about a dull edge again. Because you know how to freehand knife sharpen, you're gonna be able to hone and maintain your edge even better and easier than if not. Um, you know, with a fixed angle knife sharpening system, you have to clamp it and figure out the angle and do all these things in order just to hone it. And honing, honing only takes a couple seconds. So that can be kind of frustrating when you could literally be done honing by the time you even have it clamped in the, you know, a fixed angle knife sharpening system. And then if you're in the field or out doing something and your edge goes dull, well, if you don't have your sharpening system with you, well, then you can't do anything. But if you know how to freehand, all you need is one stone in your pocket, whether, you know, it's a maintenance stone or some sort of stone of whatever kind. And I always recommend to have that. You know, if you know how to freehand, I recommend it, period. You should have some sort of maintenance stone or maintenance system that's like, that's pocket pocketable, you know, something you could put in a bag, in your truck, in your car, in your vehicle, or whatever, right? Something that you can take with you so that you you're always, you always have the ability to keep your edges sharp. And with, when you're good at freehand, that's an easy thing to do. You can sharpen any shape at any time. So with a fixed angle knife sharpening system, you can't really do that if the stones are limited. Like if they only make specific stones for that system and say none of them are super slim stones or for recurves, well then you can't do recurves. But with freehand, you can do recurves, you can do big bellies, you can basically do anything. You're not limited to whether or not the clamp can hold the blade shape, whether or not you're able to hit the edge bevel because the clamp clamping system or the blades too narrow for the clamp and the stone, you know, to, to do at the angle you want. So you, there's just a lot more ability to do any shape, any size knife. Another thing with freehand is it can be faster. Now, this will depend on your skill set, but the better you get, the faster you will be able to sharpen. So as time goes on, of course, in the beginning, you're not going to be that fast, which is fine. You know, don't, don't rush it. Don't worry about that. As you progress, you will wind up getting very fast and you will find that you can sharpen a knife sometimes faster than what some people can maybe clamp a knife and set the angle and all of that, you know? So obviously maybe, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but very close to it, you know? Like there's sometimes I can sharpen a knife in two minutes, you know? And there's other times it's gonna take quite a bit longer, it just depends, like, you know, the edge angle, the thickness behind the edge and all that stuff. But there is absolutely a lot of times I can literally sharpen a knife in a matter of minutes, if not, you know, less. And with a fixed angle knife sharpening system, while some of them might be able to go fast with those same circumstances, it's still gonna take more time. You can carry it with you forever. Of course you can carry it with you anywhere, but this is something, as long as you're healthy, which I do need to mention that obviously there's gonna be limitations to certain people. Certain people are probably going to need to use fixed angle knife sharpening because of handicaps, because of, you know, maybe carpal tunnel and just different reasons, you know? And, you know, and even in those cases, it might still be a little bit difficult or pose some issues. But as long as both parties are, are able body, this is something that's gonna last forever with you. Like you're gonna be able to do it throughout time you're only going to get better at it. It's not going to be something it, that wears out or you lose. Another thing, and this is a huge positive, semi-convex edges. You can't get a semi-convex edge on any system aside from freehand. What is that? So you have a convex edge and then you have a V-ground edge. A semi-convex edge is kind of in the middle where it's stretched out a little bit so it doesn't have a ton of convex. So you wind up having incredible levels of sharpness while also holding on to a little bit more toughness, which in some cases leads to a lot better results. Baby, look, I made you something real special. It's a salted caramel white mocha. I took a sip, sorry. <laughs> Try it. Mm -hmm. Good? Very good. You like the mm. topping? Oh yeah, I can taste the salt. So that's raw turbinado mm. cane sugar. That's delicious. Mixed with freshly ground salt. So I use like big chunks of salt that I ground, not like regular table salt. Only you chopped it up yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. It's delicious. Yeah, turbinado cane sugar is like the big chunks of sugar. That's why the topping looks like a topping and it's not just like melted into the whipped cream. It's like a damn dessert. It is, yeah. And then there's what Ghirardelli white chocolate mixed in with steamed milk. Well, thank you, baby. Aerated perfectly to 162 degrees. A shot of espresso, 
beautifully poured before its 10 second expiration time with a beautiful heart body crema poured into the milk so deliciously to create a mouth orgasm. How Thank you, you baby. Thank you. Okay, I'll leave. <laughs> Bye. Another positive is it's far, far, far more affordable. Like a lot, lot more affordable. You can literally get by with two sharpening stones and a stone holder. And technically, you don't need the stone holder. You can hold it in hand and sharpen it in hand. A lot of people sharpen that way. I actually learned to sharpen that way. And a lot of people I know in the community sharpen that way. However, if you want to sharpen with both hands on a flat surface, you're going to need a stone holder. It just holds the stone a little bit up for you so you have clearance for your hands. But Two, two stones, a 300 grit and a 600 grit diamond. You could even go a 200 grit and a 400 grit, but a 300 grit and a 600 grit, I think are a little bit better. And you're good, you're good to go. That's a medium grit edge. A medium grit edge works on every steel. There's no steel that does bad with a medium grit edge, but there's some steels that do really well with a polished edge. So if you wanna to get to that, yes, you're gonna need more stones, you're gonna need more supplies, and that does start adding up over time. But just to have a high quality edge, you can absolutely get that with just two stones. And you know, if you can't get it with just two stones, well then you don't need any other stones because none of the other stones matter until you can get really good edges on those two stones. So if you can't get a super sharp edge on two stones, a 300 and a 600 grit, don't even try to go any higher because it won't matter. You have to be able to do that. That's the foundation of your edge. So if that part's not good, then the other stones won't do anything for you. But it is much, much, much more affordable than shelling out hundreds of dollars on a sharpening systems, than adding attachments, than adding stones. Stones can be very expensive. So, you know, with freehand knife sharpening, you can get by with any sort of budget stone, any sort of budget diamond plate or, or whatever, you know, diamond plate. Some of them are gonna wear out faster. Yeah, there's gonna be better quality ones. And, you know, I would recommend those over the, the super affordable ones, but regardless, the edge will be the same. It's just one stone's gonna last a little bit longer. It might be a little less contaminated and things like that. So what are the positives for fixed angled knife sharpening now? Well, one is <clears throat> the angle's held free perfectly. You do not have to worry about the frustrations of holding or finding your angle. I mean, you still have to find your angle, but once you find the angle, you don't have to worry about holding that angle. You can lock it in and just go. Another positive is it is much faster to learn. Um, there is still a learning curve, so you are still gonna have to have an understanding of knife sharpening, and then there is an understanding of knife sharpening on a fixed angle knife sharpening system, but it is much faster to learn because you don't have the frustrations of having to hold the angle and creating a muscle memory. You have the, abil you have the ability to get perfect V-ground edges which with freehand you can get, but it takes time to establish that, to be able to do that. With fixed angle knife sharpening, you know, it's, it's a very little learning curve that you're gonna need and you will be able to get perfect V ground edges. And technically you can get convex edges with attachments, with certain systems, not all. With the right stones, you can sharpen difficult shapes with ease as long as you have the attachments and stones. Again, unlike freehand where you can just do it, with a fixed angle knife sharpening, you're gonna need the attachments and the stones, but if you have those, you can do very difficult blade shapes very easily. You don't have any worries of convexing. Because it has the, the, the angles held for you, unless if you have the attachment for convexing and you're trying to convex, but if you're just trying to sharpen your knife, you know, with a regular V-ground edge, you have no worries to convexing. So that, and that is a little frustrating for people that are trying to get a perfect V ground edge because they, you know, will be convexing their edge. Stropping can be done perfectly after sharpening. You, because you're not changing anything, you're not moving anything, you're just switching from a stone to a strop, the angle is still held perfectly. Unless if you have to adjust it for, <laughs> which like I said before, if something is thicker or thinner, that you, when you switch stones, you know, to a stropping, uh, to a strop, if the strop is thinner or thicker, then yes, you will have to adjust angles, 
but it'll still be easier to match and you can make sure it's a perfect angle and you know you can basically strop at a perfect angle the same angle you sharpened at another positive and this is probably the biggest positive why people love f fixed angle knife sharpening systems aside from it holding the angle and this kind of ties into that is that high levels of sharpness and perfect Perfection is much easier and much quicker to obtain. You don't have to worry about the weeks and months. Well, you still have a learning curve, but you're not going to have to worry about the months uh, and months and weeks and weeks of learning to, to perfect and get a perfectly polished edge. Because with freehand, a polished edge is going to be much more difficult to get to than a, a medium grit. A medium grit is going to be much easier to, to accomplish. With Fixed angled, the, the medium grit's just as easy as the polish if you know what you're doing. Like there is still a learning curve, right? You still have to understand the stones, you have to understand the grit, you gotta understand how much time to spend with each grit, you know, and things like that. But as long, but as, long as you pick that up, you know, it's fine. You can get a mirror, a perfect mirror polished edge. And, you know, you can see that, like, because a perfect mirror polished edge, sh the light shines off of it differently than something that's, say, convexed. So you do have that ability. So all in all, which one is the better way to go? Which one should you go to and which one would be better for you? Well, if you are just trying to get super sharp edges as easily as possible with the least amount of frustrations and you have the money, then fixed angle knife sharpening is going to win that. Because you don't have to spend weeks and weeks and months and months learning, you will have a little learning curve, but as long as you can, you know, fork out that money, you can get yourself a really good system with really good stones and all of that stuff. However, I'm very passionate about freehand, and I do think that there is something that you get from freehand that you will never be able to get with money. Like, you can't buy it, right? It's something that, that, that you, it's, it's hard work and it's acquired, right? It's something that, it's a skill set. So I do think that that is superior because you can take it anywhere. You don't, you're not limited to anything. You know, you can, you, you have much more, you have a, a greater ability to keep your edge sharp and to sharpen your edges, and you are not going to be you're not going to have to worry if something happens. Like if something happens to your sh if something happens to your sharpening system, if it's lost, if it's stolen, if it falls off a building, or if an earthquake happens and the whole world is all messed up, and you have to go back to tribalism, and there is no fixed angle knife sharpening. Well, you're still good to go. You still have you still will have a knife. Sh fuck me. You will still have a very Nice, sh <laughs> I can't get this out. <laughs> you will still have a very sharp knife. Also with freehand, there is that thing where you get to say it's a freehand sharpened edge. You know, I, somebody else said this joke, it was Pete from Cedar Canada, and I thought it was great. He said, how do you know when, uh, or how, how do you know that somebody did a freehand edge? Because they'll tell you, because they'll tell you. Because they're never gonna start it off with, I sharpen this knife. It's gonna be, I freehand sharpen this knife. This is a freehand edge. You know what I mean? So you get the bragging rights. So if you don't have that, if you don't have the ability to do it a freehand, right? Then if you say I sharpen a knife, well, that usually means you sharpen it fixed angled because otherwise you would have told me you did it freehand. <laughs> Which I think is absolutely hilarious because it is so damn true. So, anyways, that's my answer. That's what I think. I do think that freehand knife sharpening is a little superior to fixed angle knife sharpening. However, I do understand that to, to a lot of people, if not the majority of people, they will find that a fixed angle knife sharpening system will be superior to them. So in that instance, yes, that one's superior for you. So you gotta use what works for you. But you know, hey, if you're limited with money, right? But you have time and you have the ambition and the tenacity to learn, well, then freehand knife sharpening is going to be way better and it's going to be way more beneficial to you over time. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.